Coming up in today's show, Elkie shows us how to revive and season old rusted cast iron or carbon steel grill grates. In Dish of the Week, Neil cooks coley fillets with a sesame stir fry salad. We travel to Texas to meet our special guest, Justin, aka Babyback Maniac. Elkie gets to grips with an octopus. And we go on a journey around the barbecue community to take a look at what you've been cooking. Welcome to the Lockdown Barbecue Show. Welcome to the Lockdown Barbecue Show. This is our 14th program and we hope you've had a really good week. Elkie, what have you been barbecuing over the last seven days? So we've actually had a few friends over in the last week. On Monday, we had a couple of people over and I did some chicken shawarma, which was some chicken thighs on the spit, uh, cooked on the braai, all over fire with some homo flatbreads. It was absolutely delicious. Thursday, had another set of friends over. It was one of their best days. So did a bit of a treat. I did a nice bone in sirloin, again cooked over fire. We had some scallops. It was all absolutely delicious. But the weird thing is I didn't take any photos, no videos or anything. And that actually felt quite liberating. Then at the weekend, I did a lovely joint of gammon because we do like a bit of ham in this house. So I smoked the gammon over maple smoke with a maple glaze and it was absolutely delicious. Now, I think you did a gammon yourself over the weekend, didn't you? I did. It was the very first time I've ever cooked a gammon on the barbecue and we had it for Sunday lunch. It was absolutely lovely. Saturday night, we had cheeseburgers and on Friday night, we had pork chops again, which was absolutely delicious. Oh, it all sounds absolutely banging, mate. And it's good that we're both outside cooking over fire as much as we are. Can't beat it. Now we're going to take a look at my how-to. In this week's how-to, I'm going to show you how we take this rusty old carbon steel grill and return it to its former glory. Now, we've all done it. We've all probably got a bit of uh, cast iron, a bit of carbon steel. Um, in the garden that they haven't seasoned before it's gone away it's been away for a few months um, and you come back and it looks something like this uh, whether it be a cast iron skillet dutch oven uh, i'm going to show you on this carbon steel grill but the same principle applies um, we want to basically strip back wash off this rust um, strip it back um, as smooth as possible and then what we're going to do is we're going to get some oil on here we're going to get it in the oven we're going to re-season it we're going to do that a couple of times and it should give you a surface almost as good as what you had when it was new so the first thing we're going to do is just take some hot soapy water and a scouring pad and we're just going to wash off as much as we can with the scouring side of the pad. Um, so just take your scouring pad, just give it a quick once over. This isn't going to get all of the rust off, but it's going to give us a little head start. Next, we're going to take some of this steel wool um, and this is going to do most of the work at removing that rust. Um, you might want to use some gloves while you're doing this. So we're just going to cut a bit of this off and again, we're going to use it like we did with the scouring pad, just to brush up and down on that grill grate until that rust comes off and we start getting it back to somewhere that we can work with again, that we can re-season and we can get it back to its former glory. So we're going to take some of this off. We're just going to keep it in the hot soapy water, um, but instead of the scouring pad, we're going to be using the steel wool. And you'll start to see after just a, a minute or two um, that a lot of that rust is just coming away um, and we're starting to get back to seeing the metal again. So we're just going to keep at this um, on both sides. When you use your steel wool, just get it, just push it down like that and then you'll find that it will find its way naturally into the gaps. Um, so we're also doing these little side bits of the bars inside as well. So we're just going to go at that on both sides. So this has now been cleaned and it's ready to season. Um, so seasoning is pretty simple. We're just going to put a coat of oil on this, pop it in the oven, 250 degrees, and leave it there for about half an hour, 45 minutes, and then we're just going to turn the oven off and let it cool inside the oven while the oven cools. And then once it's cool, we're going to apply another coat of oil, do exactly the same again, heat the oven up, 250, another coat of oil, pop it in, exactly the same again, 30 to 45 minutes, turn the oven off. That should give it two coats of seasoning, which I'm happy with. Um, I mean, you can go nuts, you can clean this more than I have done. Um, I've done this in, you know, 10 minutes just to kind of give you an idea of how to do it. Um, so let's go ahead and just get some oil on there. And you don't need a lot when you're seasoning. Um, so I'm just going to put some on this cloth. Um, we do this a couple of times, but you want it really thin. You want a really thin coating of oil on there. You don't want any kind of anything that looks like it might drip because um, it's just going to go tacky. So, like I said, we've just got a tiny bit on our finger here, and I'm just going to just go over the surface with my finger. You can see it is a very light coat. We're just going to use our finger to get inside those gaps as well. 
So that's it. We've coated it with our first layer of seasoning. This is going in the oven now for 45 minutes and then we're going to let it cool and then we're going to come back and do the same again and I'll show you the end result. So this is our end result. Um, we've put two layers of seasoning on here where we've oiled it, put it in the oven, allowed it to cool and then put another layer on back in the oven and allowed it to cool. And all I've been doing now is just going over it again with one final coat of oil. This is cooled again now, so one final coat of oil and then we can just put this away and it's going to protect it against rust so it doesn't get into a state that it was earlier. Um, or you can just stick this on your grill now, heat it up and it's ready to cook. So like I said, just a thin coat of oil just to protect it or get it ready for the next cook and that's it, job done. So there really is no excuse. Get out there, get those barbecues lit and get cooking. That was my how-to this week. I'll see you again next week. Some fantastic top tips there, Elke. Cheers, Neil. I mean, I'm the first to admit that I don't always keep my cast iron cookware in tip-top condition, but at least you know that with 10 minutes of graft, um, you can get them back to their former glories. Absolutely. Now, Elke, would you like to introduce our special guest this week? Yeah, so our special guest this week is someone whose YouTube channel I've been watching for quite a while, especially since I started out barbecue, and he's always very insightful, very knowledgeable. It's Justin, a.k.a. Baby Back Maniac. Justin, welcome to the Lockdown Barbecue Show. You're based in Texas. How are you found in lockdown at the moment? Oh, man, I, I got to tell you, it's a, little, it's a little surreal. I think everybody kind of feels that way. Um, but, you know, I can't complain too much. We're, we're in a spot where we're kind of spread out from our neighbors so we can go outside. We have space. It doesn't feel crowded. You know, it's just, it's just different. It's just crazy. You know, uh, pandemics turned out they're not the... They're not the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> Your YouTube channel, for the viewers that don't know, Justin um, has a YouTube channel, Baby Back Maniac, with 80-something uh, thousand subscribers, I believe. I'd be interested to know kind of when it started and how you got into it. From the moment I got into barbecue, I was, I, I have a little bit of ADD. So there's, <laughs> one of the side effects of ADD is hyper-focus. So anything I'm into, I'm really into, right? So I, I focus on it really deep. And so I was, I was taking in all the information I could about barbecue. So I was on all the forums posting and cooking all the time, probably 12, 12 times a week. During that time, I was also on YouTube a lot. So, so what's funny is some of my favorite YouTubers now um, are some of my best friends. But back then, they were just heroes. You know, they were barbecue heroes. They're just guys that, that, that I just couldn't get enough of what they had to say. So that was kind of that was kind of my transition into it was one day I was talking to Troy Smith from T-Roy Cooks. He's like, you should get this cooker and then you should start a YouTube channel about it. And up until that point, it had never crossed my mind. And it was like a light bulb went off and I was like, you know what? Maybe I could do that. But yeah, it was Troy. Troy's the one that got me into it. That was a long answer. I hope you guys aren't trying to squeeze me into your 25 minute time frame because uh, it's me guys. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed all your all your videos are really nice and tight, which by the way, your opening is amazing. I love that. It looks so good. You guys do such a good job with that. It's a very professional. You would is that That's is that down Neil? To Neil? That's down to oh. Neil. <laughs> Great job, Neil. Thank you very much. Now, yeah. with all YouTube channels, to be successful, we think having a great name for a channel is so important. How did you mm -hmm. come up with the name Baby Back Maniac? A name, your name is so important. You know, that is like your business card. That's the first thing people see. That's the thing that you hope they remember. And one of the mistakes I see a lot of people do is they come up with a name that either is hard to remember or even if you can remember it, you can't remember how to spell it. And so they'll do clever things with the name. And it's like, if you don't know how to spell it, you can't type it into YouTube and find it, you know? And so I worked really hard to come up with that. I wanted something that rolled off the tongue and that also um, was fun, you know, it was silly something that people would kind of go into it with a good attitude. You know, they knew they didn't know what to expect. And um, at the same time, I wanted them to know they were getting barbecue if they, if they clicked on it. Does that make sense? Absolutely. How long roughly does it take you to edit a video? Oh man. Are you sitting down? <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> um, people say it's two hours per minute. I, I, I bet that's pretty close. I bet that's pretty close. Um, by the time, and it's not just the editing, it's the, from the point where I think of the concept, because I do a lot of stuff. Um, I do a lot of stuff that people don't probably don't realize. Like I do a lot of SEO work, like sort like just finding things that have strong YouTube appeal, things that seem to work for my audience, things that I enjoy. I, try, I always try to triangulate between things that I love, things that I know my audience appreciates and things that YouTube 
has shown that it's willing to promote. So you, you kind of have to have all three of those. Otherwise, it's just not going to work, you know. So I actually spend a lot of time planning out videos. Um, so from the time I start planning them out to the time I, I reply to the last comment, um, 50 hours at least. Blimey. Yeah, Blimey. It's, not, it's not something I, you know, whip out in the afternoon. Justin, um, obviously you've got so much kit to cook on. Um, so many dishes that you do on your YouTube channel. Tell us, um, you must have a favorite. Ooh. I mean, I have to say ribs, right? I'm the baby back maniac, right? That's important. Um, you know, I, my favorite, probably this might surprise people, but beef ribs, like beef short ribs. I don't, I don't know if they're called that there or not, but the really thick beef ribs that cook, you know, you can cook for seven, eight hours and, they just melt in your mouth. I, th that might be my favorite. I really like a good prime rib. Um, those are those are some of my favorites. But yeah, it's all low and slow. I mean, I we'll have steak or burgers or you know just like everybody else. But for us, I mean, for me, it's the it's the low and slow, and it's not even the the, the smoked stuff is is really really great. So yeah, good answers, good solid answers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Justin, I watched one of your videos where you do a walk around your backyard. You seem to have every single brand of barbecue there. Which one's your favorite? <laughs> oh, man, that's a tough call. Okay, so I get, asked, I get asked this question a lot, and there's usually two variations of it. Which one's your favorite? And if you could only have one, which one would it be? Right? So those are, my, those are the two questions that I get. If, if you're asking me which one is my favorite, it's probably going to be my Lone Star Grills Offset Smoker. So it's a big, big steel monster of a pit that is uh, 24 by 48. You can pack it full of food. You burn, you know, you burn real wood logs. I usually have post oak, a big stack of post oak that throw in a log every, you know, hour or so and just sit there and smell it. To me, to me, that is what American barbecue is about right there. That, that, especially in Texas, like that is that is what it's all about and if i had all the time in the world that would probably be the only pit i would ever have um as far as as far as um if i had to pick one um it, and and i had to get rid of all the others there are so many wonderful pits out there today that there's it's almost hard to it's not hard to find a bad one but it's hard to pick one for sure i really like my weber summit charcoal grill i really like my kamado joe big joe and then the 26 inch Weber kettle is really close to my heart. Do you guys have that there? I know sometimes you guys get the better stuff than we do. And sometimes we get the better. It, it, the, the 26, is that the, is that the ranch? That's not the ranch, is it? It's one size down. So um, they probably have it measured in centimeters there, but like it's the, there's your standard size kettle, which is 22 inches. There's the ranch. The one, there's one in the middle that is kind of like the Goldilocks of grill sizes because it's got all the features of a regular kettle, but it's, it's quite bigger. It's like 508 square inches of cooking space. I think something like that. Yeah. One of those. I love looking online to see what camera kit people have. And I've looked yes. at your Instagram account to see what sort of cameras. You seem to have quite a few Canon cameras. Can you tell us what yes. your setup is? I have two 90Ds, two Canon 90Ds. Um, because most of what I shoot is outside and because the autofocus is so smooth, I use the kit lens a lot of the time. So the, and I'm talking about the 18 to 135 kit lens. Again, it boils down to a very smooth autofocus. And then I have a Rode wireless, uh, what do they call it? Wireless go mic. Um, yeah. that, that sits on my lapel. It's this little mic that's about this big and it clips to your shirt and it clips to the top of the camera. You have a wireless Bluetooth, I think, connection, goes straight in, burns it onto the, burns it onto the clip so you don't have to do any syncing in post. It's perfect for what I do. And then I have a little Sony point and shoot one they just came out with called the ZV, ZV1. I've been listening to all these Canadian uh, reviewers talk about it. The ZV1, that's what we call it here in America. But then I use that for uh, like walking around or travel or I have a, now I have a, a camera mounted above my grills. And so I stick it up there. In terms of for somebody like me who started the YouTube channel um, and, you know, wants to try and get subscribers, what, what would you say to somebody just starting out that's looking to kind of build a YouTube channel? Well, I think the most important thing is when you edit your videos, you need to edit them in such a way. I, it's kind of a cliche to say story is king, but that's that it is, you know, you need to edit your videos in such a way where every piece of, uh, of time that you have in your video is serving a purpose. And if you can't, 
if you can't tell me what it's doing for your video, then you need to pull it out. What you'll find is a sh like a video where you pull out what's not necessary to the story, what's not adding knowledge or humor or pushing the story along. Like if you pull it out, you're, you're, you're never going to miss it. That would be the main thing I would say is just every, I, while you're editing, ask yourself, if I wasn't me, would I watch this? Being able to like ruthlessly cut out things that you don't need, super important for people, keeping people engaged. Keeping people engaged for as long as possible on the video is super important. I feel like that's one of the biggest things that makes YouTube actually promote your video. Um, like if, if you can keep, for me, it's about eight and a half minutes. If I can keep the average viewer on the video for eight and a half minutes, there's a really good chance that video is going to do pretty well. And the other thing that's helpful is finding topics that are underserved. My, my approach since the beginning has always been people are, people are trading their, they're giving me their time, right? I need to give them something in return. I need to either make them feel good, help, help them with a the buying decision, um, make them laugh, make them, make them smarter, you know, give them, give them my, like, so that's a big part of it is thinking, thinking of it as if you're serving your audience. Um, because I think a lot of times we as YouTubers, we get it twisted where we think they're here for us. And really we, we need to have that, that approach where we're doing it for them. Does that make sense? Yeah, that absolutely makes perfect sense. I, I mean, it's really good advice because um, I, I remember when I first started, my videos were 20 minutes long. Um, mm -hmm. when, when I look at them now, you know, I get them down to about eight minutes for the same video that will tell exactly the same story and have the same end result and, and, and be as informative. Because um, you find you, you can sometimes maybe waffle on a little bit that doesn't need to be in there. So, yeah, I think that's very important is keeping the engagement there and just, just keeping something happening that the viewer is going to be happy with. Justin, thank you for being a fantastic guest on the Lockdown Barbecue Show. Thank you so much for having me, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Justin. You've been an absolute superstar. A big thank you to Justin. Now, Elkie, Babyback Maniac is such a good filmmaker. He really is. Like I said, I've been watching his videos since the start. They're very knowledgeable. They're easy to watch, easy to understand. So thanks again to Justin for being on the show. Now, this week, guys, we've had a bit of a switch around, and Neil has decided to take on Dish of the Week. Let's take a look. I love this part of the Kent coastline. I'm at all marshes and behind me is the Isle of Sheppey. This is the Thames estuary and in summer you can catch bass, silver eels and some flatfish and in winter you can catch whiting and sometimes cod. My dish of the week is coley fillet with a sesame stir fry. It's going to be delicious. I'm going to be grilling this lovely Coley Phillip from Regal Fish Supplies on my kettle grill with just a little salt and oil. Coley is a sustainable alternative for cod and haddock. It's rich in protein and vitamins D and B. Its firm texture makes it easy to handle and like other white fish, there are many different ways to cook it. And today, I'm going to grill it on my kettle grill. First, dry both sides of the fillet and pack gently with a paper towel to remove any moisture. Next, lightly oil both sides and put the fillet to one side. I use sesame oil to give it extra flavour. Today I'm using briquettes as my heat source, which don't burn quite as hot as lumpwood charcoal. I'm setting up the grill for two zone cooking. Position your coals and add the grill grate and give it a quick clean. To make the Asian style dressing, you will need one and a half tablespoons of toasted sesame oil, two tablespoons of light soy sauce, half a teaspoon of caster sugar, and one teaspoon of grated fresh ginger, and one red chilli, deseeded and finely sliced. Mix together the soy sauce and toasted sesame oil and add the sugar, ginger and chilli. Gently mix the ingredients together. My stir fry ingredients include ruby chard and courgettes from my garden, red, yellow and orange peppers, grated carrot and bean shoots. Place the coley fillet skin side down on the grate, directly over the coals. You will need to cook for between four and five minutes. The fillet will slightly shrink during cooking. 
Place the spatula under the skin and it's ready to be flipped once the skin doesn't stick to the grate. Flip it over and cook for a couple of minutes flesh side down and then remove and keep warm. Heat the toasted sesame oil in your wok and add the stir fry mix and cook for three to four minutes. The smell coming off the wok is amazing. This coli fillet from Regal Fish Supplies is beautifully moist and flaky. So this is my dish of the week. Coley fill it with a sesame stir fry salad. Drizzle the dressing over the stir fry and enjoy. I hope you'll give it a go. Seafood works so well on the barbecue and it's always delicious. Neil, I've got to say that did look absolutely delicious. The fish was lovely, it was great cooking with Coley, and it was brilliant getting down to the Thames estuary. Now it's time for What's Cooking. Elkie, which was your favourite dish? I feel like there's a bit of added pressure now. We've got the competition running with Firma Pen, so I definitely need to choose right and take my time to pick. So I picked Twisted Ribs Barbecue with the sea bream and the scallops that he did. I mean, it all looked absolutely mouthwatering. So that's one and a half for three weeks to go. Congratulations to Twisted Ribs Barbecue. Now it's time to see how Elkie got to grips with an octopus this week. So I was sent this beautiful little octopus from Regal Fish Supplies and I wanted to recreate the octopus dish that I had in Bali on my honeymoon where it was grilled over charcoal and tasted absolutely amazing. So the first thing we've had to do is remove the beak from the octopus and also remove the eyes. And then we brought a pan of water to the boil and we start to submerge the octopus in the water. We dunk it in two or three times before we fully submerge the octopus into the saucepan. Once that's submerged, we boil that for around about 45 minutes to an hour until it's nice and tender. Then we remove and pop it in the fridge for a few hours just to dry. Now for the dressing, got some fresh oregano from the garden that we've washed and finely chopped. And to that, we've added about 100 ml of olive oil. Then in with the fresh herbs, in with a couple of teaspoons of lazy chilies, and I've also gone in with a generous pinch of salt. Now give that a good stir, and that's gonna be our dressing for the octopus. Now I've sliced this octopus into tentacles to make it easier to grill and we've given it a nice coat of olive oil and some salt. Now we bring a grill up to a nice high temperature and just pop the tentacles straight onto the hot grill. We want to get a lovely char on there and here's the noise you want. Sounds beautiful doesn't it? Now give them a flip after two to three minutes. Remember we want that lovely char on each side and then You'll see that we've done some lemons as well. We're gonna squeeze this over the octopus before the dressing. Remove the tentacles from the grill over with the lemon, just a nice little sprinkle, and then we finish it off with that lovely oregano and chili dressing. And there we go. There's my attempt at octopus, and it tasted almost as good as what I had in Bali. It was bloody beautiful. Elkie, that octopus looks so tasty. Cheers Neil, it really was. The trick is to boil it, which cooks it and tenderises it, and then when you cook it over flaming hot charcoal, it gives you that lovely char. We've finished off with that spicy dressing. It was absolutely beautiful, to be honest. Sounds absolutely amazing. Now, Elkie, would you like to tell us who our special guest next week is? Yeah, so next week we've got a familiar face within the barbecue community. It's Ben Forte from Kamado Joe. And that's going to be really good fun. Now, thank you for watching. A big thank you to our programme sponsor, Kamado Joe, and we'll see you next week. Yeah, and again, a huge thanks from me, guys. Keep those fires burning, and we'll see you next week.